I'm Igor Kefetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, the podcast for anyone who wants to build a wildly profitable email list working from home. If you'd like to make six figures, travel the world, and help people improve their lives in the process, this podcast is for you. I also invite you to claim a free copy of my best-selling book, The List Building Lifestyle, Confessions of an Email Millionaire, at igorsbook.com. Get the free book plus $3,000 bonus package that includes my best capture page templates, email swipe files, and traffic blueprints. Visit www.igorsbook.com for details. And now, it's time to claim your list building lifestyle. Welcome back to the list building lifestyle. I'm your host, Igor Kfetz. And today, I sought after one of the top affiliate marketers in the world. No joke, this guy is the number one ClickFunnels affiliate of all time. He actually made over three and a half million dollars in affiliate commissions promoting just one affiliate program. This is nuts. I mean, I know lots of hardcore, really, really sick affiliates, but this guy is, is on a whole other level. And what's really crazy is he's so down to earth. He's so chill. He's so laid back that you would have never believed that he makes so much money with affiliate marketing if you just met him in real life. Plus, he drives a Toyota. So what do you think? <laughs> most affiliates, they drive a Lambo or a yacht or a Porsche or something. But this guy, he's super nice, super fun. But at the same time, he just figured this thing out and I can't wait to interview him. So allow me to welcome my good friend, Spencer Metchum from buildapreneur.com. Spencer, welcome to the Liz Building Lifestyle. Ah, thanks so much for having me. That easily the best intro I've ever had. I loved it. <laughs> All right, nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm always happy to uh, to build up my guests because I don't like inviting just anybody on the show. And uh, I've actually been trying to get you on the show for well over a year. Uh, as we've talked about, you know, the conversation sort of fell through the cracks, the pandemic got in the way. But here we are, and I'm really excited for you to share your story with our audience because it starts out it so similarly to, to all these stories that I've heard myself and that I went through as well as an affiliate. So tell us, how did you get into this wicked world of affiliate marketing? Yeah, so it was actually, it was a coworker of mine um, that I uh, worked at a digital marketing agency and uh, I was literally like the bottom level, right? The very, the peon of the peons, uh, just kind of doing the grunt work. And uh, the guy that was a level or two above me uh, showed me one day, uh, we were talking side hustles and he showed me this blog he ran and it was, uh, it was a vacuum cleaner repair, a vacuum cleaner review blog. So he just reviewed vacuum cleaners, right? And uh, when he first showed it to me, it was I mean, by far, even to this day, it's like the ugliest blog I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> just <laughs> seemed like it was put together by like my four-year-old, you know. Um, so he showed me it, and I was like, I, mean, I could still remember like thinking like that's a joke. And then he and then he's like, oh yeah, this makes me. At the time, I think it was five grand a month from this blog, um, and I was just like, are you kidding me? Like <laughs> that like you know pile of like online mess is making you that much money and. Uh, so that was my intro, and and that's why I, you know he never told me it was easy. But when I went into it, I thought it was easy because if that blog could make money, I could definitely do better than that, right? Um, come to find out, obviously it's much harder than that. Looks aren't everything, <laughs> and uh, while I made a much better looking blog than his, uh, I spent about a year trying to build up that blog uh, to the tune of about. Twenty dollars a month. So I think at the end of the year, I was making uh, twenty dollars a month on a good month, and and that was thousands of hours, uh, lots and lots of money, uh, you know, tons of time, and uh, so that was kind of my intro and my first attempt at it. And uh, and like you said, like so many other people, no nowhere near what what it you know, nowhere near as easy as it looked on the surface as people when I was first introduced it to it. Yeah, this is the this great allure of affiliate marketing where. You know, you look at it and it's so shiny and, and people are making big money. And I'm sure someone's listening to this podcast right now. And they're like, oh, wow, this guy's making so much money. And it sounds so easy and it's passive income. But the, the, the beginning is always difficult. Like I haven't met anyone who just skyrocketed from day one. It's almost like this uh, um, this spaceship analogy, right? To get that rocket into space, 
takes so much power. Almost all the power, you know, goes to just to get it off the ground. But once it's mm -hmm. up there, you just you can push it with a finger and, you know, it switches course. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that's exactly how it felt for me. I mean, it, it took it took maybe two and a half years before before things actually started to move. But it was like, you know, I made like $1,000 my first year, like $5,000 my next year. And then it was like, boom, $900,000 or something like that, right? Just, just like that, like suddenly something took off and something clicked and, you know, some traction got into place. And, 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 that, and now, you know, here we are today, just a few years after that, and things have been just absolutely crazy. Yeah, this is insane. So uh, let's get let's get back to that moment when things suddenly clicked. What happened? So uh, I came to the realization, you know, probably 14 months in, that blogging wasn't for me. Uh, I wasn't as good at it as I thought. I could design pretty blogs, but that was about the end of, of my skill set. And so um, my blog was about stock market trading. I was trying to teach people how to trade on the stock market. Uh, which was a funny choice because that's not what I'm good at, nor nor do I have any <laughs> any skill in that. So, but it is what I decided to get into because there was there was a lot of money in that, and uh, so I was trying to teach that, and and eventually I kind of moved on to Instagram. Instagram was just coming out, and you know I I'm watching YouTube videos, and everyone's like, you got to be on Instagram. That's the next big thing. So I hop on Instagram, and um, I start doing follow unfollow bots. I don't know if you're familiar with those. No, not sure um, what that is. Uh, I'm sure you'll catch on when I explain it. Basically, yeah, I have this bot that just goes and follows like a million accounts, right? And then if they follow me back, uh, then I unfollow them. And then I send them like a message like, hey, uh, thanks for following me. Uh, you know, you should check out this. And I send them an affiliate link. Uh, not a great strategy. It was, in, you know, it was a YouTube video that I watched. And I was like, oh, that seems like an easy strategy. So that's that's where it came from. Uh, but I'm trying that. And, uh, and and that's not doing great either. And so I, I, you know, I keep digging in and... Um, and then finally, I decide that I'm going to send people to a free training. So I'm going to, I'm going to send them, you know, I'm going to get them on Instagram. I'm going to direct message them, and I'm going to send them to this three video series that teaches them stock market trading, and then has affiliate links in all three of the videos. So I make these videos, and I like, okay, I'll throw them up on YouTube because that's where you put free videos, right? I make the videos, throw them up on YouTube, and then I, I just wait. And I, I think it was like within a few weeks of that, that two things happened. My, my account got shut down. You know, apparently Instagram doesn't like that. Apparently. Uh, and then apparently, like, I don't know why they wouldn't love that. <laughs> um, but then uh, I we had a baby at the same time. So within a few weeks of that, and it was like, it was over after that. You know, I was just like, okay, you just lost everything you've been working towards. I had a good like 20,000 followers at that point, And I'd been working pretty hard at it. And then we had the baby too. So a lot less time, a lot less motivation, uh, you know, seeing all this kind of come crumbling down. And I kind of quit. Um, and it was like, it was probably three or four months of that, uh, of, of just kind of, you know, back to the job, back to the grind, um, no longer really trying this stuff cause I've been trying for a while. And, and then I actually, I saw, I saw a few commissions come in and this is like months later. And I was like, how, you know, what's going on? Like the Instagram account that it get reactivated and I go check, no, it hasn't been reactivated. And I kind of start doing some digging and I, I, go to discover that the YouTube videos that I'd uploaded, not really uh, you know, trying to make money on YouTube, but trying to send people from Instagram to YouTube, one of those had taken off, uh, hundreds of thousands of views. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was a terrible video. Um, I, I will never understand what YouTube was thinking, but, but this video took off and, and some, I was getting a bunch, a bunch of views and, and a few clicks. I hadn't actually told anyone in the video to go click, and so I wasn't getting a ton there. But but a few people had gone on and clicked and, and clicked my affiliate link, and I'd made some money. And um, for me, that was when I went all in on YouTube. Like I was like, man, I've been working my butt off on Instagram, working my butt off on you know blogging, nothing. And then I do this like just a few little nothings on YouTube, and now I'm making some money. And and it's months later. It's passive money, right? I I've forgotten all about this. And uh, so I went all in on YouTube at that point, and. Uh, uh, I started pumping out videos and, and still I'm not good at this. So I make some bad videos, but, but I got lucky again and another video blew up. Um, and this one blew up big. The video was titled how to buy Bitcoin. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know if you're into Bitcoin at all. <laughs> I don't know if, if you've talked about that on the podcast, but it was, I, I prefer, I prefer not to talk about Bitcoin. Right now. <laughs> okay. I am heavily into, into it and I am not liking it right now. <laughs> it's not a good time. Um, Anyway, so I, it was a video how to buy Bitcoin. If you're familiar with Bitcoin's timeline, it was 2017. Um, 
that I put it out right at the midway to, to, through 2017. And that was when Bitcoin was like doing that huge just spike and everyone was talking about it. And, you know, everyone was talking around Thanksgiving dinner about Bitcoin. And, and anyway, it just exploded and everyone was trying to figure out how to buy Bitcoin. And my video was just well-timed. It came out at the right time. Um, and so that video got like 300,000 views. And I was making, uh, it was referring people just to, you know, Coinbase. I was making 10 bucks a day or 10 bucks a referral. And I was making anywhere from one to $400 a day. Like, just like that, like with the snap of your fingers, right? I went from nothing to making one to $400 a day with this one single video, uh, with one single affiliate link. And for like three or four months, that was just going on. And uh, I was, I was just you know, pull, pulling in the money. I was get, mentally getting checked out of my work. Like, okay, I'm going to quit my job. This is amazing. This is like, this is the greatest thing to ever happen to me. And then it was like January 5th or just a few days after New Year's, I, I go log in because the greatest thing about affiliate marketing is that you can wake up and check your phone and there's money, right? <laughs> That's like the exactly, number yeah. one thing. <laughs> so I go do that, you know, and it's like zero. And I'm like, what? And I go look at the YouTube video and YouTube's removed it. Just taking it down. Oh, no. Um, yeah, just and didn't didn't even send me anything, you know. It was just like that's gone. <laughs> like, so I uploaded it again, and this time it didn't take off. Uh, nothing on the next round, and uh, I, I don't know what happened. I I don't really know to this day why that video went that way, but um, but yeah, that that was my realization that oh, okay, like just as quickly as things can take off, things can disappear if you don't build this right, um, and uh, and we can kind of talk a little bit more about where I went from there or, or any questions up to that point. Well, well, first off, I wanna I wanna say that again, this is a super common experience uh, when you're tinkering, you're trying things out, and then all of a sudden something works and it takes off, and like you said, you're mentally checking out. You're like, it happened to me much in a in a slightly different way. Uh, as, for, as as soon as I made my first sale, I mentally checked out. Like that was the moment when. <laughs> I was just, yeah, I'm going to quit my job. And I actually quit my job the next day because I thought wow. that things are going to take off. And in a similar way, uh, my first sale came from social media. It was either from my blog or from my uh, Facebook profile, something. I couldn't track it because I, I wasn't tracking anything at the time. But it was, it came in and it, it, I think it was over 100 bucks, which for me at the time was kind of like a few days of actual work. So I was like, I don't need to take shit from my boss anymore right this is this is it i'm done and i quit but the problem is that for the next eight months i couldn't replicate it so i had to go and beg for my job back eventually um but uh, <laughs> yeah it happens i mean i know at least a few other people who have the exact same story where you get that initial success you get the taste for it you really build your hopes up and then it's not there anymore yeah Exactly. Absolutely. And that's where, like the, the big lesson. I think that's the most important lesson is the one you learn right there, right? Of like, oh, sustainable business, like more needs to be done. Yeah, absolutely. So, okay. So you now learned a really important lesson that you can wake up in the morning and instead of seeing commissions, you could see nothing. Basically that not only you're not seeing commissions, you're not going to see any commissions moving forward either because either your account gets shut down or regulations change, terms of service change, uh, your asset gets pulled off the internet, things can happen, right? So what was your reaction? What was your response? I'm quitting this internet marketing thing? No, I'd already done the quitting and restarting, so I was in it. I was in it now. <laughs> um, but as with most things, it was it was turned to YouTube. I, I guess that's why I do well on YouTube because YouTube is kind of my go-to. Um, so I dive in again and, and start watching videos and, and came across someone who talked about um, building a list. And I, I like didn't even know it was a thing at this point, which is crazy because I'm a marketer. I, you know, I've been doing digital marketing for companies and stuff, but somehow missed that piece of the puzzle. And, and what he said made sense. Like, you know, the, the, only, the only thing that you own, the only thing that will truly build a sustainable business model is having a customer base that you own that you can uh, have access to at any point, right? That no one can take away your access. And so that was, that was my light bulb moment of, okay, if you really want to quit, you know, you want to, you want, you don't want this to be a side hustle that sometimes makes you some bonus money, sometimes doesn't, you need a customer base, just like every other business. And you need access to those customers all the time. And, and so from then on, literally from that point on till today, my goal has been to build my email list. And, 
uh, changed, slightly changed up the content of my videos. You can kind of track it through my channel where I'll still do the occasional review or kind of like direct affiliate link. Uh, but 90% of my stuff is just trying to attract people uh, to get them into my email list uh, through any any means necessary. And I've got dozens of lead magnets kind of like scattered across the internet graveyard now or, or that I've used to, to bring in these. And, um, and, and so my business today has kind of moved from, from that, that initial model to literally two things. I, I build up my list and I'm either in list building mode or I'm making an offer to that list. And I just kind of go back and forth between those two things. And, and that's probably familiar to you as well. Uh, of, of either I'm in content mode, which is basically list building mode, or I'm in offer mode, which is uh, monetizing the list, and I just go back and forth. And it, it simplified my it simplified my my stuff a lot more, and it's uh it, it's been sustainable. So I'm you know I'm four I think I quit my job four years ago now four or five years, and never never had an issue since that was my new focus. Wow. Well, knock on wood, uh, is my mom. Yeah. Used to <laughs> um, that's, that's really, that's really cool. So you, you went through and realizing that the number one goal of getting traffic was to get, you know, commissions to, to changing that. And now the number one goal of getting traffic is to build your list. Correct. Because now having the sense of control and the sense of safety over your income, it becomes more important than chasing that next sale. Exactly, and and I've used it multiple times where uh, we've 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 hit this you know lower point. Like I'm like, oh wow, we we did not make as much as we thought this month, and I've got things to people to pay. You know, we want to do this. We want to go to vacation this month or whatever, and it's been literally as simple as finding a good offer and uh, preparing five emails and sending them out. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's crazy. It, it's pretty insane to to someone looking on the outside uh, to to even grasp that until they've actually experienced it for themselves. But yeah, I've actually I spoke to a buddy of mine, our mutual uh, friend John, and he was telling me how you mailed for for his webinar, and I think you walked to you did like fifty or forty sales or something, if my memory serves me right. And that's like in the span of a week, just by sending out a few emails. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it it's it's like whenever whenever your business needs money, you know, whenever anything else isn't working out, yeah, it, it's it's a few emails before to warm them up for the offer. It's a few emails after the offer, and it's all about like as as long as you've you know built up the right list, you've kept that list warm, and you've you've built up a relationship with that list, and they know you and they like your emails and things. Uh, then yeah, I think it was forty sales with John, but you can pull in twenty twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars overnight. And and my list, I would say my list still isn't huge. Like I'm not hundreds of thousands. My list now total probably hits about thirty to thirty-five thousand um, across all my niches and stuff. Uh, that's how big the list is, and that's that's plenty. Uh, if, that is if plenty. You build the list right. That is plenty. I mean, there's this uh, one thousand fans theory, which I think is really true. And you don't even need one thousand fans. You can get away with maybe having two hundred of them, and you will still. Um, make good money but having a list of 30,000 even if only a portion of these people are active because a lot of times you can you can have a really big list but only a certain number is active and engaging still you are bulletproof like things like inflation gas prices rent prices the cost of putting fiber connection into your into your <laughs> home like these things just aren't a concern anymore it's just not a part of your uh, worry list, if you will. Then your worry list becomes, oh man, we just hit the next tax bracket. We need to you know, <laughs> show some expenses pronto. I remember speaking to a buddy of mine. Uh, you, you probably know him, but I won't mention his name for the purpose. Maybe he didn't report his taxes, but you know, he was actually <laughs> telling me that he made so much money one year with an, with uh, an affiliate program, uh, a company that's called uh, Easy One Up, that's no longer as you know as big as it used to be um that that his accountant called him up and be like hey you're making too much money you know go buy a tesla go go buy something we need some <laughs> expenses this year so he went on to buy a tesla um so that's that's kind of funny um i, I also like the idea of building a list because as as we as we evolve and as we progress um affiliate programs they have a tendency to die off at some point not all of them but some of them yeah, yeah, I definitely seen my share of those. Yeah, so I mean, having a list is is really uh, puts you in that 
a bulletproof position. And um, not to mention, of course, there's the other side to it of people being on your list and engaging you and, and liking you and trusting you. Because, yeah, you could get 10,000 clicks from YouTube, but only 1,000 or 500 or 300 of those clicks will be people who like continuously follow you and know what you stand for. Um, on the other hand, the same 10,000 clicks from a list are much more powerful clicks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the numbers definitely support that. Um, and, and if I could say like the best, the best of the best is, is an ecosystem model, right? Which is like, they follow you on YouTube, they're on your email list, they're in a Facebook group where you're active, right? And it's like Spencer, I see Spencer every day, right? Doing something, right? Maybe they're Facebook friends with you and they follow you on Facebook. And so every single day you're kind of in their inbox, in their face um, with, with value or you're, you know, posting something that, they, that helps them relate to you or something's happening. So they're just like building this relationship with you. And I always think it's funny cause it's kind of like a one-sided relationship, you know, and I'll talk to yeah. people and they're like, Oh, I feel like you're my best friend. And it's like, I just met you today, <laughs> uh, yeah, but that's yeah. cool. You know? And, uh, and then when it comes time for the offer, right, the offer is not coming from some random faceless guy on the internet. It's coming from what they consider one of their good online friends, right? Oh, it's my friend Spencer. Who I saw yesterday doing this out with his family doing this. And then he sent an email that like helped me, you know, improve my affiliate business or do, do something the other day. And, oh, I'm in this Facebook group and there's a ton of value that's always coming there. You know, he's got interviews and stuff going on there. And, and so you're like this online friend. And when you send an offer to him, it's not like this guy trying to make money off him. It's like a friend trying to help him out and get him into something that, that's helping them. Yeah, I mean, seeing you as often as they do, uh, there's the familiarity effect because one of the things that is required for us to trust somebody is we need to be familiar with them. We need to see them a lot. Um, I don't recall the name of that book, but there's a book about an FBI agent who was trying to uh, um, recruit somebody who was a spy or something. So one of the first things that he did, he actually started appearing around the same place where that guy used to stop for coffee every single day for a couple of months just so his face became a little bit more familiar. Um, of course, I don't think that people are deluded about the fact that you're not their best friend or that you are <laughs> their best friend, but it's it's the idea that you are familiar to them versus some, some random person online, that's for sure. And yes, they know that if you're promoting something, that you're either going to get an affiliate commission or if you've got your own product going on, that you don't do it for charity, you're actually selling it for money. They know that. But they also want to know that you have a good heart, that you have their best interest in mind, and that if something goes wrong, they know who to talk to. Because I was actually going through one of our applications um, uh, yesterday for one of our uh, services, and uh, there was a person who bought something from us and then refunded and then they wrote in the application, uh, we asked them what made you decide to reach out to Igor? What, you know, why do you feel that you want to work with Igor? And you know, this person wrote, and I found it really interesting, um, they wrote, because I bought his product and then I asked for a refund and received it, no questions asked. Right? Hmm. So like some people actually do that. They want to know that you will honor the promises you've made. You know, and uh, that, that's really powerful. So just being visible, just like you said, being omnipresent, I think it's called these days, having an ecosystem as the coin that was turned by Vic Streisius, um, it, it's a really powerful thing to have. It's kind of like having a home on the internet. Yeah, and, and it's funny how many messages I'll get where people will say like, thanks so much for like showing me this or like introducing this, you know, after a big promotion where I'm pushing, you know, like John's product and I'll get these messages like, oh, thanks so much for bringing on John and showing us that I just bought and I'm so excited to get going on this, you know, and it's like, oh, you're welcome, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, uh, it's, uh, it creates a one-sided relationship, like you said, uh, but, you know, in my experience, it's, it's very similar to how people have a one-sided relationship with a movie star or with a TV show host. Like, we all like Oprah. Nobody, I mean, we never met her in person. I never shake her hand, but I like her. I kind of know what she stands for, right? We all like Tony mm -hmm. Robbins. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, some of us met him, some of us didn't. Some of us met him in a seminar, some of us didn't. But, you know, we kind of like him, right? We know what he stands for. We like the yeah. message. We like what the values that he's projecting and so on and so forth. So... Um, all right. Well, Spencer, thank you so much for sharing uh, your story with us today. Uh, it was very entertaining and uh, very inspiring. We are unfortunately running out of time. So where can we go 
to find out more about you, what you do, as well as, as far as I know, you do teach people how to start affiliate businesses and build a list as well, right? Yeah, and, and if my omnipresence has done its job correctly, you could just Google my name, but uh, you could just go to buildapreneur.com uh, and you'll you'll find uh, all over there a lot of a lot of free trainings about affiliate marketing uh, really geared around beginners just trying to get started and learn kind of the ropes of it. Yes, guys, go to www.buildapreneur.com. Check out some of the free trainings and webinars that Spencer got going on. Uh, he shares uh, his story in greater detail, the techniques that he tried, the techniques that worked, that didn't. Then he uh, goes deeper into his current top, you know, go-to strategy for driving traffic, selecting offers, building his list, and following up with his list. All the fundamentals that you should know as an affiliate. Uh, he's also a really cool guy to learn from. Again, like I said, uh, super down to earth and at the same time, super, super successful, super sharp. And uh, one another fun fact is that uh, he he built his multi-million dollar online business uh, from... It's not really a basement. It's more like a cave. Like, what is that? You had to like go down the, uh, on, a, on a ladder, right? It was sort of dug out. <laughs> what is that? A bunker? Yeah. How do you call Why it? Why didn't I tell that? I should have told that part of the story. Um, when I was first starting to build it, uh, we lived in a pretty small house. And uh, re remember, I said we had just had a baby, so it was a little loud in the house. And so we had, I don't even know why, we moved into this house. And I think at some point they had planned on putting in a basement and then it changed their mind. And so what it, they called it a crawl space when we moved in. And we never even looked in there. But after we moved in, we went and we lifted up the, it's a floorboard in the, in the what is it the coat closet you lift up the floor there's a handle and we didn't even know this when we moved in and there's this ladder that goes 10 feet down and the entire bottom of the house has been dug out about 10 feet so it's dirt floors uh, but it goes down 10 feet and that's i set up a little studio in there and, and worked there all summer wow that's crazy it's kind of like a, a prepper's bunker yeah, I mean, it was, right. it was getting creepy. ready it was for dusty. a nuclear holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> it would it would have been the place. We were ready to go. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. That's really really cool. Yeah, and guys, if you want to check that out, by the way, if you want to see uh, uh, Spencer's uh, workspace, you can go to buildaprinter.com, and there's a video there uh, where ClickFunnels came in and, and they did a case study on him because he's their number one affiliate. So you get to see the the actual thing where he goes down the ladder and he set up a little studio there. It, it's really <laughs> really cool you can't make this stuff up really can't so <laughs> uh spencer thank you so much for um for making the time i know you, you travel a lot so thank you so much for for making the time to uh come on as a guest uh to the lisbon lifestyle before we wrap up uh, any any last piece of advice, maybe the, a lesson you learned or an embarrassing mistake you made something that you feel people should know about affiliate marketing? Yeah, I, I harp pretty hard on what I call the rule of ones. Uh, so, so most people, when they get into affiliate marketing, they see, they see affiliate marketers you know, well beyond them, and they see this omnipresence like we talked about, and they're like, okay, like start the blog, start the YouTube channel, yada, yada, yada. And in the beginning, I would say, pick one single product, pick one single traffic source, and then go to town for six months, become the master of that one traffic source. And, and swear to yourself that you will give it six months before you ever attempt anything else besides promoting that one product with that one traffic source. And, uh, and I think that's uh, the best recipe for faster success with new affiliates, the rule of ones. Yeah, absolutely. Um, having laser focus on one strategy um, beats trying to spread yourself too thin. I, uh, I agree with it. I feel it's a great advice and uh, so, so overlooked. Because, yeah. I mean, it's so easy to get distracted. There's so many different ways to make money. So even within the affiliate marketing space itself, there's still a million different ways that you can skin the cat. All right. So this was an epic episode. Definitely one for the books. Uh, Spencer, thank you so much for attending. Guys, thank you so much for listening. You can find out more about Spencer and his work at buildapreneur.com. And until next time we chat, have a good one. Thank you for listening to the List Building Lifestyle. Get access to the previous episodes, transcript of today's show, as well as other exclusive content at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. Also remember to claim your free copy of my best-selling book at www.igorsbook.com. 
It explains how I made millions with list building starting from scratch. Plus, I'll give you $3,000 worth of free bonuses, including my best landing page templates, email swipe files, and traffic blueprints. Go to www.igorsbook.com now to claim your free package.